We're going to use this as a scaffold to develop a couple of really neat formulas. So I did this so that you wouldn't have to waste so much time drawing um, circles with pairs of compasses. Your circles are ready-made. What we're going to think about is these two things on the right-hand side, arc length and sector area. Arc length and sector area. So we're going to think about these things one at a time. Ian, are you ready? Cool. I'll take that as a yes. All right, here's what we're going to start with. Um, I want us to think of this as a general circle, a circle of any size, so we don't know what its radius is. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is if we say, if I got the right thing here, if I say an angle of 2 pi, if we said an angle of 2 pi in the circle, that's how much of a revolution? 2 pi. That's the whole revolution, isn't it? So in other words, I get the whole circle and I get an arc that goes all the way around. You can fill this in, it's why I've um, made it dotted there for you. An arc that goes all the way around the circle because 2 pi is a full revolution. Okay. Now this particular arc length, because it goes all the way around, we have a name for this, right? It starts with a C. When you go all the way around the circle, it's called the circumference. Very good. On a circle of any size, what is the length of the circumference? What's our formula for it? 2 pi, two pi r. r, very good. 2 pi oh. r. Does, just hold that thought, hold that thought. Um, now this sector that we're interested in, um, in this case with 2 pi, it's just the whole circle, isn't it? Right? Because I'm doing a, an angle of 2 pi. So what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, pi r squared thank you very much. Um, actually, I'm just going to add on to that the arc length. Since we're working at a length, we'll call it L. And because this is an area, we'll just call it A. OK, very good. So that's 2 pi. Nothing too dramatic. All right, let's have a smaller angle here. Let's go 3 pi on 2. So in degrees, that would be 270 degrees. Very good. So you'll need to mark in the center here, right? And uh, my angle of 270 degrees, you can draw it a couple of different ways. I'm going to draw it like this. So my angle is going to go around, around like so. So the arc that goes with this is going to go around the circle this... Whoop, that's not a very good arc, so let's try that again. This is so much easier on the whiteboard, but I wanted to do this for your accuracy's sake. Okay, so there's my arc, and it goes all this way around the circle, as you can see. Now, I'm not getting the whole circumference, am I? How much of the circumference am I getting? Three, three quarters, right? Three fourths. So that whole circumference, 2 pi r, I would multiply that by 3 quarters, by 3 fourths. 3 over 4. Can you guys simplify that for me? 4 goes into, so it's going to be pi yep. r times 3 over 2. Yep, pi r times 3 over 2. I might put that 3 over 2 out the front, and then there's the pi, and then there's the r. Huh. Interesting. Okay. One more, let's go over to the area. I'm not getting the whole area of the circle. I'm only getting, again, three quarters, right? So I guess I would write that as three quarters times pi r squared. You okay with that? All right, you're starting to get a hang of this, right? Can you, for the next two circles, can you do pi radians, get the according arc length and its area, and then for this uh, fourth one, do pi on two for me. Can you do those? I'll give you a minute to catch up. Okay, so uh, catch me up. We were looking at pi and pi on 2. What was the arc length you got for pi? pi it's just pi r. Oh, no, pi r on 2. No, no, just, pi r. just pi r? Yep, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. Okay. Um, the area of this semicircle, of course, is? Um, half of pi r squared. Yep, yep, pi r squared over 2, or half pi r squared is also fine. And then for this guy here, which we would call when you've got a quarter of a circle, does anyone know it's got a special name? Just like half a circle is a semicircle, it's called a quadrant when you've got a quarter of a circle. A quadrant. Um, so the arc length you get for this quadrant is uh, half of pi. Yep, half of pi r, and then our area lastly is a quarter pi r squared. Okay. Now what I want us to have a look at is these four rows, and I want us to try and observe the pattern that is here. There's a couple actually, at least. Um, for example, let's just think about arc length for a second. When you look at the angle that you start with, and then you look over at the arc length that results, okay? Firstly, you always get R there. Why do you always get R? Why is that always there? You've got to have the radius. It's like, I don't know how big this circle is, so you have to tell me how big the circle is. Obviously, the bigger the circle, the bigger the arc, right? But then you've got, alongside that R, every time you have this guy, right? 
And what does that happen to equal? That angle out the front of the arc length. Seven. Seven? Of all your guesses, sorry, that was a, that was a pretty impressive one because there's literally not a single seven on my page. Um, what's the relationship between that coefficient of r and the angle? Isn't it decides. exactly the same? Yeah, yeah. The angle decides how long your arc length is. In fact, if we had here's your last circle down the bottom, right? If you had an arc formed by some random angle, let's just put some weirdo looking angle here. Right? Suppose you had an angle of, say, let's call it theta, right? And I thought, well, how long will the arc be if I have not a nice neat angle like 2 pi or pi or something like that? If you had theta radians, right? Uh, yeah, go ahead. If you had theta radians, right, then the length of the arc, well, like you told me, you've got to have the radius because it depends on how big the circle is. And then what do you multiply it by? What do we do it in all the subsequent rows? Instead, of, it's, half, it's like instead of like pi on two, pi on two going here and then pi on two going here, it's like the angle's not pi on two, the angle's theta. So you just multiply by that angle, right? If you want to work out the length of an arc, you need to know how big the circle is, and then you just multiply by the angle that you form. Okay. Now, just before we go into area, I just want you to marvel at how wonderfully simple that formula is. It's like, oh, it's thinking like the area of a rectangle. That's how simple it is because radians are built to be used with circles. Okay. When you're doing this in degrees, you've got to do awkward conversions and that kind of thing, whereas radians are clearly fit for purpose. Okay. All right. Now, when we come over to area, this one takes a slight bit more thought, but not that much. Um, do you notice, again, I'll highlight in a different color, you also have an angle out the front, and then instead of r, you've got r squared. Why is it r squared? Because we need to find the... There are, t there are two r's? Why are there two r's? Why are we doing r times r? Because you could never cancel the r. Uh, yeah, the, the r's always there. It's never going to cancel with anything. Uh, but it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's like a square because we're thinking about area, aren't we? Area is a two-dimensional quantity, length is a one-dimensional quantity. So that's why there's a single r here and there's r times r over here. So the r squared is in common every time, but the angle doesn't quite match up, does it? With the angle we get over here, it's not exactly the same. What is it? It's always half of what angle you started with, right? So in fact, we could write pi r squared, we could write it as half r squared times 2 pi. Do you agree with that? I mean, I know it looks a little awkward because you're like, why would you not just cancel the half and the 2? But the reason I write it this way is, now just have a look at the next one. It's half r squared times what? 3, Three pi <coughs> on, two. on 2, the angle that we started with, right? This one's already sort of written in this form, right? It's half r squared, and then what's the angle on the end? It's just pi. Right? And then our last one here is half r squared, and then what's the angle? Half r on 2. Pi on 2, and that's why the, the two twos become that quarter that you've got. So if I were to generalize this and say there's a formula, we're always getting a half and then r squared, and then what's the thing we multiply for an angle of theta? Theta. Just, just theta, right? I've got the on 2 out the front. You see that with the half? So this guy here. This is our formula for the area of a sector according to whatever angle that you have subtended at the center. Okay, so what you've got here, this pair of equations, they're what we call the, um, bless you, the circular measure formulas because, surprise, surprise, they help you measure circles. Okay, so we can use these in a variety of ways. If you turn, you're going to need to open up your year 11 textbook. Uh, and 14b is where we're going to be looking. You can see all these shapes that are variations on, bless you, arcs and, um, and sectors, right? Though I should point out, and I didn't do it on the, um, on the piece of paper, but I will quickly show you. Ah, this is so much easier to do on a, on a whiteboard. If you have a look at this slice of pie that I've just cut out, what did we call that again? Starts with an S, this shape here. This is a sector, thank you very much. But if what I do instead of taking this whole slice of pie or this whole pizza slice, if what I do is instead cut off an edge part like that. See this guy here? That guy there. It's not 
a sector anymore. Does anyone know the special name for this little tiny sliver? Segment. It's called a segment, very good. Now, the area of a segment, 14C. Think about this, 14B. The area of a segment is, it's the sector you started with, right? Which is, what did we establish was the area of a sector? Half R, R squared R theta. R Half R squared theta. That's the whole sector. But then what you want to remove is this triangular bit. Do you see that? This guy here. Okay, we're getting rid of that. It's a triangle. How would we work out the area of this triangle, keeping in mind, we know this angle, it's theta, and we also know these two sides. Is there a way we can work this out nice and simply? Think about this, we've got, we got two sides at an angle. We have a formula for this, right? It's um, take away half AB sine C. What's our A and our B in this case? The They're both the radius, right? So instead of saying AB, I'm going to write R times R, which is R squared. And then you say sine C. What's the included angle here? It's the only, the only angle I've got there, sine theta. So marvelously, you get this simple cancelling. Well, cancelling is not the right word. Factorization, right? What's in common between these two terms? Half R, half R, half R squared theta. Sorry, half R squared. And then inside the brackets, you're going to get the theta minus sine theta. Now please, please, please what? note, right? That's nice, isn't it? Please note, this is all in radians, right? You pop this into your calculator in degrees and you get a whole different thing, don't you? So all of these formulas we've developed, this one for the segment, this one for the sector, and then the length of an arc, um, they all require you to be in radians when you're calculating and when you're measuring angles. Make sense?